Okay, this is a cathode ray tube. What it essentially is, it's a vacuum chamber. There are no gases inside this glass tube. Uh, the only thing we have are two electrodes, one's called the cathode, the other's called the anode, and a fluorescent screen um, in the background. It's coated with some type of fluorescent material. When I turn the power supply on, we'll see a beam that, is, that causes that fluorescent screen to glow. Looks like a nice straight line, doesn't it? We call that a cathode ray because it emanates or begins at the cathode and shoots across over to the anode. J.J. Thompson was working with cathode rays. We really didn't understand what they were. I mean, we have electricity going in one side and coming out the other, but there's nothing inside to conduct it. It's a vacuum tube. So he decided to apply a magnetic field um, to this cathode ray, and he found something interesting. Let me apply one pole of the magnet to this beam and we'll see what it does and then we'll flip it around and see what the other pole does. This is my favorite part. Can you see what's happening to that beam? What does it appear as though it's happening to it? It's moving. It's moving. It's being repelled, isn't it, by the magnet. Let me flip the magnet around and what do you think is going to happen this time? Well, if it's being attracted on one pole, See how it's being attracted there? Let me rotate it so the kids on the, this side of the room can see it. See how it's being attracted there? And then the other pole, do you see how it's being pushed down? What does that tell me about that beam? It has a what? It has a charge. Let me tell you about the poles of the magnet. The one that pushes it away is the negative pole. So what does that tell you about the charge of those particles? Negative. Negatively charged particles. And J.J. Thompson was actually able uh, to do a charge uh, to mass ratio of these particles. And he found that these particles were about 2,000 times lighter than a hydrogen atom. Now, at the time, that was very profound. What did Dalton say? Are there any particles smaller than an atom? J.J. Thompson just found something 2,000 times smaller than a hydrogen atom. Why is the hydrogen atom in something 2,000 times smaller than it so profound? Hydrogen. Because hydrogen is the smallest atom, isn't it? So if we found something 2,000 times smaller, we have found our first subatomic particle. And it's called the electron. electron. That'll work. 